Hello. Today I'm going to share with you my master techniques for doing custom brushes, neon brushes that had calligraphy edges to them. So let's get started. Now, if you watched my videos before, you notice that the first tool I select is the A tool. Once I select the A tool, which is the direct selection tool, from that point on, you'll never see me physically select the tool again. I initialize the tool first. Therefore, if I go to B for brush tool, I can always go back to the tool by holding down the command key. I really want to get that into your head. The command key for Macintosh, the control key for Windows. So as an example, if you create a e box by hitting the M key, I can move the box simply by holding down the command key. Good habit to get into. Anyway, let's get started with our brushes. So this is a technique that I kind of perfected about 20 years ago with gradients. Now, unfortunately, you can't make a gradient from a path if you use the gradient tools. So as an example, if you make a path here, so here's a path. I'm going to fill the path with nothing by hitting forward slash, stroke it with pink. Okay, so I'm just going to select pink. Now, I'm going to take this, this stroked path, and I'm going to stroke it with, say, 10 pixels of pink. Now, if I go to my gradient tool here, then eh, it doesn't work. Gradient tool is for fill, not for stroke. Okay, so they might ask yourself, what if I turn the path into an outline? How can I do that? Well, I can go to object, path, anything about an object is on the object menu. Think Illustrator. Think the way Illustrator thinks. Object, path, path, outline, stroke. Okay, now that it's an outline stroke, yes, now I can fill it with a gradient, but I can't turn this gradient into a brush. If I come over here to my brush palette and I hit the new brush palette by selecting that and I want to make a new art brush, and you can't do it. So here's the workaround. So let's start from scratch here. Let's get revert to the last save version. So again, first tool I select is the direct selection tool, A key. Once that tool is selected, anytime I want that tool, again, I simply hold down the command key, so if I'm my brush tool or pen tool, hold down the command key to select. Command key to select for Macintosh, control key to select for Windows. So here's my technique for doing what I'm about to share with you. So we're gonna make a stroke. So P for pen tool. Again, let's fill it with none. Make sure your stroke is selected by the X key. The X key toggles between fill and stroke, fill and stroke, fill and stroke, the X key to exchange. I'm going to select the fill, forward slash key, no fill, X key, stroke. So we're going to make a stroke from point A to point B by holding down the shift key. So we're going to select this by holding down the command key. The entire path is now selected. The entire path can now be affected because the path is selected. Therefore, the path can be affected. We're going to go up here to our point stroke. And we're going to make this 10 pixels of stroke with a pink stroke. Okay, now we're going to use the blend tool, which is letter W. Letter W selects the blend tool to blend from point A to point B. But here's my technique for doing what I'm about to share with you. I want to create neon, which means in the center it's white, then it feathers out to the pink. So it goes white to pink. So here's how we can do this. If you hit Command K, I'm going to change my preferences. We have a 10 point stroke, so we're gonna change our preferences to 12. What that does for me, when I hit the down arrow key, is move the selected objects 12 points. Okay, now I don't wanna move the selected objects 12 points, I wanna make a clone copy. So a simple, 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 simple way to do this is option, arrow key down, on time. Perfect, option key makes a clone copy, arrow key down, arrow key up, arrow key left, arrow key right, makes a clone copy. Okay, now this guy here, I want to fill with white and stroke it with, stroke with 0.25 points. I just want to have a small little sliver of a stroke. Now, if it helps you to visualize this better to go to command Y, command Y preview under the view menu, view menu command Y toggles between preview and wireframe, preview wireframe. In order to affect these two strokes, we need to select these two strokes. 
Okay, they go to the width tool. I'm sorry, go to the blend tool, which is the letter W. Letter w. I'm going to just zoom in here for a second. Space bar, grab the page, move the page. Command plus zooms in, command minus zooms out. Space bar, grab the page, move the page. So I'm going to basically blend from point A to point B by selecting my blend tool. The shortcut for that is W, just simply W. I select the first path. Hold down the option key or all key for Windows to get a dialog box. Here's dialog box. I want to specify number of steps. I'm going to pick 25 steps between these two strokes and hit OK. So now when it commit Y, there's my gradient. Now I can turn that gradient into a path. So I could just select, I'm sorry, I can turn this gradient to a brush. So if you simply select this and go over here to your brush palette and make a new brush, two ways you can do this, drag it to the brush palette or make a new brush. We're going to make a new art brush. Now you can call it whatever you want. We're just going to call it art brush one. Now, little technique here. I want to be able to make changes to this in the future with colors. So I'm going to pick tints and shades. Now, if you pick tints, pick tints, say that five times fast. If you pick tints, then you can change the color. If you pick tints and shades, you get a different shades of that color. Let's just pick tints in this particular case. Now, how does that help me? Well, I'm going to temporarily uh, uh, hide this for a second. So command option three, object, anything about an object, object menu, object hide, command and three, Macintosh, command and three, Windows, control three. So that's now hidden. Okay, so I just want to share a concept with you. I'm going to temporarily hide this, anything about the object. Again, think Illustrator. Think the way Illustrator thinks. That's what I try to share with you guys. So object, anything about the object is under the object menu. Object hide, selection, command three. Command three for Macintosh, control three for Windows. Command option three, unhides. Command three, hides. Command option three, unhides. Command three, hides. Windows epi, control alt three, unhides. Control three, hides. So why did I do that? Just to get it out of my way for a second. So if you come up here to your swirl tool, which is inside your line tool, and select the swirl here, spiral, I'm going to select the spiral and click right here. So now notice that nothing's happening here because I need to be in the default colors, which is D, D for default. Once I select D for default, it basically erases what was in the appearance menu before. So D for default, hit the X key to exchange to the fill. Fill, fill with none, forward slash key fills with none. Forward slash key again is the question mark key. Forward slash question mark. Go back to the stroke and click pink. Okay, now it's filled with black. I want to fill it with pink. So now because I selected the tints, I can fill it with pink. And there's my pink setting. Now, if you double click here, again, right now, this is set to tints. If you send it to tints and shades, watch what happens. I'm going to hit OK and hit Apply. Now I get the pure color from tone to tone. So I'm going to basically take this and just make a clone copy. Make a clone copy by holding down the Option key. There's my clone. Then I can make that a different color, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, this doesn't have much character to it. I'm going to show you a really super cool technique for creating neon from the center. Right now, the neon's going from the left to the right. White. I want to put the white at the center. So here's a super power user technique, a technique I've been using since uh, probably about version 2 of Illustrator, 1990. Okay, so let's, hit, let's unhide our selection. So object, object, show all, command option three. Okay, now what I want to be able to do, I want to take this white and put it in the center. Super cool technique. If you go to command Y, you have these two paths. This, this is my gradient from point A to point B. So I can select these two anchor points, a direct selection tool. I'm simply holding down the command key to directly select these two anchor points. I'm not concerned with these anchor points right now. I directly select these two anchor points and go to object, anything about the object, 
object menu, object path, path average. The shortcut for that, command option J. Windows would be control all J. So watch this. Select these two paths, command option J. Join them, average them rather, on both access points. Select these two anchor points, uh, command option J, Windows control all J. And there's my neon from the center. How cool is that? Now I can make a brush from that. Now if this is too thick for you, meaning it's too wide, you can narrow it down by just going to the scale tool and hitting the return key. So based on these choices, I'm gonna hit the tab key. I don't wanna move it horizontally. I do wanna scale it vertically. So we're gonna vertically scale this 50%. I simply hit the return key and there's a 50% reduction. If you want to go another 50%, what I've done here is transform the object. So I can just repeat the transformation by hitting Command D. And there's my super thin. You're better off to deal with a super thin line because you always make it thicker. But if something is very thick, you can't make it thinner. You can't go thinner than one point. I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to Brush, New Brush.